I truly believe that a majority of people would rather look wealthy than be wealthy. What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hill podcast or webcast because I don't know how you're consuming this content. My name is Jimmy, and as we start off every show that is with gratitude, I want to say thank you to everyone who supports By the Hood in any form or fashion, as well as the youth from the By the Hood Ownership Camp, which is coming to you this summer. Um, all of our members from MDC Strategy, we appreciate the support as always. Uh, I'm dolo again this week. Um, Corey will be back soon. Got a lot going on down in Texas. But got to bring you a pod. You know, we got to do a pod every Wednesday. Um to talk about personal uh, finance as well as black wealth, this past Monday was Tax Hat to Die Trying, and Friday is our live show. We weren't live last week at a, a family emergency, but, you know, we'll be back this Friday with our Bitcoin giveaway. So with that being said, today's topic, so, so let me stop real quick. Um, for those listening to the audio, I'll make sure to read this article I want to go over so you can get, you know, the context of what I'm going to be talking about. The overall topic today is really about keeping up with the Joneses. Um, but just some thoughts overall uh, about the current culture we live in as it pertains to finance, man. So this is an article from Market Watch where this lady writes in, and here's what she's saying. I will share the article in the show notes as well as the description. For those watching the video, you can see the article. Um, for those listening to the audio, um, you know, just bear with me. But you know, then then I'll get into the conversation that we can talk about and have feedback with. But this article says, "I'm weary of repeating myself." How do I deal with rich friends who take $22,000 cruises and book $800 hotel rooms? Prices are crazy enough already. So um, the person writing in says, when one friend made a fuss over wanting to fly business crash, I threatened to cancel completely. So um, it's an interesting article. Uh, she says, uh, dear Quentin, and Quentin is the person that they write to for Market Watch where they ask their finance questions. Shout out to Quentin. Uh, but the article says, I've never had a problem with living below my means until now. My problem is extravagant friends and family members who think differently than I do. They post on social media and want me to continue to vacation with them. I have no problem saying no to $16,000 plane tickets, $800 hotel rooms, and $22,000 cruises and such, but they keep asking. When one friend made a fuss over wanting to fly business class, I threatened to cancel completely. I am not poor but I'm a single senior without a rich husband or any husband for that matter. I'm helping my grandkids with college and have three properties to maintain. I have no debt or mortgages. I'm weary of repeating myself to these friends. And as a result, I don't often answer their calls. And I now pretend to be busy when they ask me to go on vacation or to an expensive restaurant. Do we have to live in a world where everything should be displayed on social media? How do I deal with rich friends and with rising prices signed the poor friend i thought this was an interesting article and i'm going to explain to you why um we live in a world that is dominated by social media it's dominated by tiktok twitter instagram facebook the whole nine you know all the big sites and um it's to the point where and i've said this in the past and i'll say it for this episode i truly believe that a majority of people would rather look wealthy than be wealthy Again, I believe a majority of people would rather look wealthy than to actually be wealthy. Why do I say that? I say that because I've actually had people tell me that. I had someone tell me that if they can't share what they're doing on the gram, is it worth doing? And it blew my mind because I thought they were joking. So I start laughing. They're not laughing. They're dead serious. Then when I heard someone else tell me that, I said, oh, so this is a thing. And I know it's like a running joke, like if it ain't on the gram, then it ain't happen. Um, and, but this is the world that we currently live in. But this is not really good for your health or good for your pockets if you are currently trying to keep up with people who are doing things that you really have no interest in, right? Because again, it's about what makes you happy. And it sounds like this lady in this specific article, those things don't even, that's not even attractive to her. So why would she spend her money that way? But we have to take a, a, a deeper dive back and figure out why is it that people feel the need to be validated by others, right? Which is going along with the theme of a lot of what I've been talking about lately. And maybe the reason I'm talking about the psychology of money lately is because um, I started rereading the book again for the umpteenth time. Um, I got in a conversation with a shout out to um, the finance rebel, my brother Kamari. And he was making the argument that uh, the psychology of um, 
psychology of money is uh, possibly the greatest personal finance book. I don't know about that. So I said, let me let me go back and uh, I got it on Audible. Um, I said, let me re-listen to it. It's by Morgan Housel, The the Psychology of Money, for those that haven't read it yet. Um, I'll put a link to that uh, book in the description as well. But that's led me to speak more on the psychology part of money as opposed to just like the quote unquote run the play stuff. Um, and when you think about the psychology of money, FOMO is one of the biggest issues that everybody deals with. I deal with it. You deal with it. And if you say you don't, you're a liar or you don't know how to tell the truth. But the fact of the matter is um, you have to decide how you're going to behave with your money and your finances. And you, once you make the decision, that's what you're going to do. This lady is talking about friends taking $22,000 cruises. Now, maybe like, you know, those those experiences are worth it. But $22,000 cruise is but noodles. That is a lot of money for a cruise. And I've been on several cruises. Never been on a $22,000 cruise. Maybe they're cruising around the world for a year. I don't know. That's a lot of chicken, though. Um, so to me, this this article is uh, just a microcosm of something that people deal with every day. Um, as it pertains to money and watching how their friends spend. But the one thing I want to make sure that everybody understands is most people out there to see on social media you're trying to keep up with, you're trying to keep up with their lie, right? And for some, it might be their truth, but even keeping up with their truth is crazy because you're going to drive yourself crazy. You have to be thankful and be happy. Not that you shouldn't try to achieve more, but understand that everybody has their own race. Stop trying to run somebody else's race. You can't do it. It's no way to keep up. It's no way because, again, people are out here trying to one up each other and, you know, they're kind of running in mud. You'll, you'll never do it. Um, so I think that she needs to basically have a conversation with her friends. And sometimes you, another part about this is sometimes you got to cut people off. Just being honest. And I know that's hard to hear for a lot of people because sometimes the people that you have to cut off is your blood. You've done it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I got folks in my family. I was I was telling someone I got a uh, aunt I haven't spoken to in so long. I don't even remember what the beef was about. But you know, sometimes you got to protect your peace. Now I'm not on no no Brian McKnight stuff where you, <laughs> you got the Brian McKnight. No disrespect, but I'm not on no thing where you just disown like you know family members for for you know no reason or you know I don't have any kids to cut off. But I couldn't see that. But I'm talking about people that are toxic that are in your family that are just not trying to move the way that you want to move. And they don't have the same belief systems or trying to, you know, kind of go to where you're trying to get to. Um, sometimes you have to make that hard decision to protect your peace and to protect your pocket. Because, again, this whole money game is more about psychology than anything else. And sometimes people will drag you down. Um, and a lot of times they drag you down because they want you to be down there where they are. But it can work the opposite way, too. They drag you into trouble by spending a bunch of money that they really don't have either. Right. And again, I know people floss on social media, but the data says that most people who floss on social media don't have the money. Most people out here broke. Credit card debt is at an all time high. So even sometimes you see people who are doing these things, they are doing it on credit, borrowed money. They don't actually have wealth. They don't actually have capital. Something else I'm going to bring up as part of this conversation, right? Even as it pertains to people in real estate, everybody in real estate ain't got money, right? Some of your favorite influencers who, quote unquote, have all these properties, they don't really have any money. All they have is a gang of debt. There is a difference between debt, equity, right? And please understand, anybody can rack up a bunch of debt if you play it right. But who has true wealth, right? True wealth is the wealth that can sustain the ups and downs, right? It's not about just being outside. When everything's going well and people are just throwing pins at a, at a dartboard and making money in the market, who has the true wealth that is able to last? I often talk about 2008 and that crash in 2008. And, you know, I was in the game before then, but I saw a lot of my folks who were realtors and brokers and investors come 2009. They were preachers. And I was like, how y'all get into the church all of a sudden? <laughs> then I realized they was trying to find another hustle because. They couldn't maintain because a lot of it was built on smoke and mirrors. So even when you see people outside that you're trying to keep up with, a lot of them don't have capital anyway. So you're playing a game that you don't even necessarily have to play. So this is why it's always important to run your own race, right? Take care of your finances. Build real wealth. Don't just build 
you know, a bunch of debt. I know one of the ways right now, everybody is trying to do business credit, business credit, this and that. Cool. But again, life is math, right? Life is math. You don't have real money if you're borrowing money to live, right? And I see people doing that. Figure out what real wealth is, build that wealth, have equity. Don't just be in a bunch of debt and you're using that money to live an extravagant lifestyle. Because a lot of people are doing that. And this isn't my opinion. This is based on data. This is based on the data that most of the credit card um, amount of money that's owed in credit cards right now is at an all time high. And people are spending money like never seen before. Right. So the spending hasn't really slowed down the way that we thought it would be at this point. So it's a recipe for disaster. For those that don't know any better and for those that don't take the time to slow down, stop trying to be what you see on social media, because most of it is a lie. Right. And figuring out what works for you, what works for your budget, what works for the amount of income that you have coming in. Maybe you want to get more income. Maybe you don't. Right. Make laziness great again. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not saying don't work hard. I'm just saying sometimes you just don't feel like it, man. Folks, like, you got to get a second job. I don't, listen, I ain't doing all that, man. Listen. Leisure time is important. That's all I'm going to say. And I don't care what end of the income bracket you are. Nobody deserves it. Hustle culture is trash. F hustle culture, man. You know what I mean? I'm about building value, creating value, um, doing things that add value to your life. But I'm not about that hustle culture. You're not going to have me up 4 a.m., you know what I'm saying, uh, drinking green juice and running 17 miles. Die. You'll never catch me doing that because my ass is going to be sleep, enjoying my sleep, hitting REM. Waking up, stretching, doing a little bit of yoga. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking it. You know, that's 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 the wave I'm on. I'm not on that hustle culture. Man. Y'all got all that. I'm going to make 17,000 phone calls before you wake up. Well, God bless you. You know what I'm saying? You know, working hard is for suckers, man. I don't know how to explain this to you, but working hard is for suckers, man. I'm about working smarter. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't got mama mentality, man. I got... <laughs> got so different i'm not i'm not ben simmons mentality but i'm somewhere in the middle y'all like you know what i'm saying I, I i enjoy life though that's what it's about it's about enjoying life man so with that being said i just want to bring this quick pod to you man read this article to you share this article with you uh get your thoughts about fomo about family friends and trying to keep up with the joneses and also just the psychological piece if you haven't read that book take a uh take a look at the book it's called the psychology of money um matter of fact i'll put it right here for those watching the video psychology of money right there um, for those listening to the audio, I will put the link to get that book within the show notes as well as the description. Uh, it's called The Psychology of Money, but it talks about just different things in terms of psychology. But this article reminded me of that because I am reading it, but also just the idea of um, keeping up with people's lives. Keeping up with people's lives is a terrible, um, terrible path to go down. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we're going to continue to have this, these Wednesday pods to talk more about the psychology of money and just how um, different things affect us as it pertains to money. But my overall message is do you, right? Do you figure out what works for you, run your own race, and F them people, even if they're your family, man. F them people, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, appreciate you guys. Do all the YouTube and stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. Give me some feedback. What do you think about this uh, this article? As well as just the idea of keeping up with the Joneses. Um, I would say the Combses, but they can't really say that right now. It's, just, it's a bad time to say that. <laughs> no diddy. Um, so, but I just, you know, give me some feedback, though. Let me know what you think. Pull up on Friday at 7. Pull up to the live show. Win some Bitcoin. Let's have some fun. Um, you know, have fun the rest of the 2024, man. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And as we always say, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Game elevates. And we'll see you guys on our next episode. Peace.